If you're looking to invest in the financial markets passively, then ETFs could be an attractive option for you. It's very attractive. By placing just a single trade, you will be investing in a fully diversified portfolio that can consist of hundreds or even thousands of assets. These might include stocks, bonds, or maybe even a mixture of the two. Some ETFs even track commodities like gold and silver. Let's learn more about how to invest in ETFs and why it may just be the perfect investment for you. I'm Sean with The Modest Wallet, and today we're gonna to be talking about exchange-traded funds, otherwise known as ETFs. That sounds fun. If you're new to investing and especially ETFs, then you have come to the right place. Also, definitely hit that subscribe button so that you can check out our latest and greatest videos, and don't forget to click that little bell so you get notifications every time we release a new video. Make sure to like and subscribe. All right, let's talk about what an ETF is and how an ETF works. In simple terms, exchange-traded funds, or ETFs, allow you to invest in a diversified portfolio through a single trade. ETFs are managed by institutions such as iShares and Vanguard, who in turn pull funds together from thousands of individual investors. Then the ETF provider will buy and sell assets on your behalf. Unlike mutual funds, ETFs are tasked with tracking market indexes rather than outperforming it. For example, an ETF might track the Dow Jones, meaning it will buy shares in all 30 companies that represent the index. If you're lost, let's simplify this a little bit. Let me simplify it for you. Picture having a box. The box represents the ETF. And that box is filled with multiple stocks that move independently, but the profits and losses get pulled so you only gain or lose the difference like you see in this example. Now let's talk about how you make money with ETFs. Make money. Once you have invested in an ETF, you can grow your capital in two ways. And that's through dividends or an increase in the NAV or the net asset value. Although not in every ETF scenario, many ETFs do pay dividends. Dividends refer to a sum of money paid regularly, typically quarterly, by a company to its shareholders out of its profits. The net asset value or the NAV refers to the total value of the assets held by the ETF at the current market rate. In simple terms, if the ETF had 1 million Apple shares at a current stock price of $100 each, its NAV would be 100 million. If a few months later Apple shares goes up to $120 each, the NAV would stand at 120 million. And this means that the NAV increased by 20%. Had you originally invested 5,000 into this ETF, your capital would now be worth $6,000. This is because the NAV has since grown by 20%. Of course, this is an overly simplified example as an ETF wouldn't just hold one stock. One side note, some ETFs are actively managed, which we will discuss in more detail later in this video. With that said, there are many similarities between a mutual fund and an ETF, as both will pull investors together, give you access to a diversified portfolio of assets, and buy and sell assets on your behalf. Perhaps the main difference is that mutual funds are actively managed, while most ETFs are tasked with passively tracking a specific market. So now that we have explained what ETFs are and how you can make money from them, I'm now gonna share how to invest in them today in four easy steps. The first step for how to invest in ETFs is to open a brokerage account. This account? There are hundreds of online brokers that allow you to invest in ETFs, many of which offer commission-free trades. If you are comfortable choosing ETF investments on a DIY basis, then consider the likes of Webull, TradeStation, or Public.com. These online brokers offer brokerage accounts to retail investors, meaning the end-to-end -end ETF investment process is typically very straightforward. Many of these online brokers also allow you to invest in fractional ownership. This means you can purchase a small fraction of one ETF share. If you like the sound of ETFs, but you don't quite have the financial know-how to pick your investments, it might be worth considering a robo-advisor. For example, Betterment, SoFi Automated Investing, and Acorns will ask you a series of questions to ascertain what type of investor you are. Then the robo-advisor will assign you a ready-made portfolio of ETFs. Although the robo-advisor option may be more suited for newbies, 
the fees will be higher. One other thing to note about step one is that compared to mutual funds that only trade once a day, ETF prices fluctuate throughout the day as they are bought and sold. Once you've selected a suitable brokerage account, you then need to think about step two, which is to choose which ETF to invest in. Invest in my business. In the vast majority of cases, ETFs are passively managed. This means they simply just track a potential asset or market. For example, if the ETF is looking to track gold, it will ensure that virtually all investor funds are backed by physical gold. On the other hand, if the ETF is actively managed, the provider will have more flexibility in which assets it buys and sells and when. For example, the ARK Innovation ETF will invest in companies that the fund manager deems offer distributive products and services. There are pros and cons to both options here, so you need to think about your financial goals. For example, if you simply want to create a long-term investment plan that focuses on the US stock markets, an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 is arguably the best option on the table. However, if you're looking to invest in a diversified basket of yield dividend stocks, an actively managed ETF might be better. This is because the fund manager can personally select the dividend stocks that are added to the ETF portfolio rather than religiously following in an index. I'm including a great chart if you're interested at looking at the best ETFs by the sector they are associated with with these and other ETFs, you want to always make sure you're looking at the commissions and expense ratios that are involved, because if you aren't careful, many of these can be on the higher end if you aren't doing your research. The good news is that in many cases, ETF expense ratios amount to just a small fraction of, of a percentage. An expense ratio of 0.03% means that a $5,000 investment would cost you just $1.49 per year. Some other things to consider as you choose an ETF to invest in are dividends and drips, as well as performance and diversification. It's definitely worth checking out whether or not your chosen broker offers an automatic dividend reinvestment plan or drip. It allows you to automatically reinvest your dividends, your quarterly dividends, as soon as you get them. You should also explore what the past performance of the ETF in question looks like if, for example, you are invested in a passively managed index fund, you should compare its performance to that of the ETF. There will always be a slight difference between the two, but too much of an unfavorable disparity means you are making less than you could be. If you are investing in an actively managed ETF, you won't have a specific benchmark to compare against, but you should look at how that ETF has performed over the last five to 10 years. You should also assess how well diversified your chosen ETF is. For example, some ETFs give you access to thousands of stocks and or bonds from a variety of markets, exchanges, and economies. This ensures that you are not overexposed to a single group of assets. The next step in how to invest in ETFs is to place an order. I'd like to place an order. This part of the process is fairly easy, especially when using a trading platform that is aimed at retail investors. In fact, in many cases, it's just a case of entering your stake and confirming your investment. With that said, some online brokers require you to fill out a more detailed order form, which will look at the following. That includes the ticker symbol. ETFs are listed on stock exchanges, so we'll always have a ticker symbol. There's the bid ask price. The bid price represents the price that you can currently buy the ETF price. At the asking price refers to the price that sellers are willing to accept. Then there's the number of shares. If using a broker that supports fractional ownership, you can usually enter the dollar amount that you wish to invest. And lastly, there's the order type. By placing a market order, you'll be buying the ETF at the next available price, which means the order is executed immediately. Once you have set up your orders, check over the information before confirming the trade. Finally, step four is to monitor and manage your ETF. Monitor? I'll manage. Assuming your ETF order has been filled at your chosen brokerage, you now need to think about how you intend on keeping tabs on your investment. To ensure your ETF investment remains aligned with your financial goals, consider the following. Reinvesting dividends, dollar cost averaging, and rebalancing. First, when you are monitoring your investments, make sure you are reinvesting your dividends. The worst thing you can do when you receive a quarterly dividend 
is to allow the funds to remain idle. Instead, you can grow your money much faster by investing the dividends back into the ETF. Even better, if your chosen broker offers drips, this will be done for you automatically. On top of a regular dividend reinvestment plan, it's also worth considering a dollar cost averaging strategy. This can be as simple as investing $100 into your accounts each week or each month. Not only will this ensure your investment portfolio continues to grow with time, but your exposure to a short-term market trends will be reduced. This is because on each weekly or monthly investment, you will attain a different price cost. Lastly, one of the main attractions of investing via a robo-advisor is that your ETF portfolio will benefit from regular rebalancing. This means that the ETF provider might decide to reduce your exposure to a single ETF or remove it completely. If you're investing in a DIY basis, then this is something you're gonna to need to do on your own. You can do this by assessing whether you have too much money invested in a particular market, such as growth stocks. You should also consider wider market conditions and how this relates to your ETF portfolio. Now let's talk about the benefits of investing in ETFs. Benefits. Benefits, good. There are many benefits to investing in ETFs, such as passive income, because there's no need for you to personally pick and choose assets when investing in an ETF. There's the low cost. Most ETFs charge an expense ratio at just a fraction of 1%. The liquidity ETFs trade just like stocks, meaning you can enter or exit the market at any time during standard hours. The instant diversification, some ETFs contain hundreds or even thousands of assets, allowing you to diversify through a single trade and the access difficult markets. In many cases, ETFs give you access to markets that as a retail investor, you might find difficult to reach. Like with all investments, you still need to consider the downsides of investing in ETFs. There are downsides. Some of the downsides include that they are restrictive. When you invest in an ETF, you have no say in which assets the provider buys and sells. Then there's the market cycles. If you are invested in a passive ETF, you are bound by the same market downfall as the respective market. And last, there's the NAV versus benchmark. There will always be a slight gap between the ETF NAV with that of the benchmarks it is tracking. But if the NAV is too far away from the benchmark, this in itself is an opportunity cost. Once again, that was a lot of information that I just threw at you. If you are looking to build a long-term investment plan in a diversified manner, ETFs are well worth considering. With a single trade, you could be purchasing a basket with thousands of stocks and or bonds. This ensures that you can invest in the financial markets in a risk averse manner as you won't be overexposed to a single group of assets. Perhaps the most challenging part is choosing an ETF that meets your financial goals and attitudes toward risk. I hope you found value in this video on how to invest in ETFs. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Let me know what your favorite ETFs are in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out our investing tips for beginners video and our investing in stocks for beginners video. I'll leave uh, links up above for you to do that as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you over at the Modest Wallet blog or over there on Instagram, or I'll see you in the next video.